Back in June of 2022, I started having uh, some issues where after working on bikes for a while, I would come inside and I had quite a bit of pain just under my ribs. This proceeded for a while and then I started having issues with eating. I would eat a sandwich or something small and it would feel like I've had a giant turkey dinner. I just feel over, over full, stuffed. So we then went to the, see the family doctor uh, because there was also a lot of weight loss as well. I'd lost about 20 pounds and after meeting with him, he sent me on to see a gastro specialist. The GI specialist that I went to see ordered some tests. The first test being a CT scan with a contrast dye. While I was waiting for the CT scan to happen, I, apparently I had an allergic reaction to the dye and passed out on the floor in the CT waiting room. To which they called a code blue and when I woke up I was surrounded by about 20 medical professionals. Um, my wife who was rather upset at what was going on. After all the tests were performed, it was revealed that it was an allergic reaction that I had to the contrast dye. Um, however, they were still able to proceed with the CT scan. After the CT scan, we had a, an appointment back with the GI specialist and the blood work came back and the CT scan had come back that Steve had some lymph nodes that were extra large in some areas on his stomach, pushing up the stomach into the hernia. I uh, had confirmed that there was a hiatal hernia there as well and that there was um, lymphoma in his white blood cells. So of course you're shocked. You know, you take that news and you go, okay, what does this mean? Where do you go? What do you do? Um, Thankfully, we had a trip booked for Jamaica because Steve had turned 50 the, the last year and we were going away with a family vacation. And so that gave us a huge opportunity to go and talk and have those hard questions and just be able to talk about, okay, what's going to happen? Where are we going? What, what if we do chemo and you don't do well with this? What do we do? And it was a great opportunity for us to sit back and talk without the kids around because the kids were uh, engaged with our neighbors who came with us and they were out playing volleyball and doing all the fun stuff that you're supposed to be doing on vacation and having those conversations with my mom and dad where we were sitting back and, and having the hard conversations as a couple. So when we came back from Jamaica, we were supposed to get a referral from an oncologist department and we waited weeks and weeks and I was like, what is going on? And you call and, oh, we don't have the referral yet, or it'll come, just have patience. And then Steve got sick to the point where I was like, I'm not fooling around with this anymore. We're gonna go to the ER. And the ER doctor had such a great relationship with the oncology department. And when he found out what we were going through, he's like, oh, you should have had that weeks ago. Let me go and put this referral right under the door. So the next day we got a call from the oncologist department stating that, you know, we, we're so sorry, we never got this referral. Um, our fax machines have been down for a few weeks. So let me get you in next week and we'll get that going. So just such a great blessing that he was there in the time frame that we needed to get the oncology referral. The oncologist that we went to see, uh, the very first thing he did was he requested a PET scan. Uh, PET scan is a nuclear CT scan, uh, which the cancer cells show up very well. The results of that PET scan were available very, very quickly, which was amazing. Um, we went back to see the oncologist and his report was that several of the lymph nodes around the pancreas and the stomach area were quite a bit larger than they should be. Um, and the fact that the lymphoma had spread throughout my entire lymphatic system. He referred to it as being death by a thousand pinpricks. Um, each one on its own, not an issue. All of them together, an issue. So the treatment plan was decided to go with six months of chemotherapy. It was a real blessing that the lymphoma was caught early enough that the treatment would be fairly straightforward. Treatment number one went fairly well. It was easy to, relatively easy to do. Um, I was unaware of really what was gonna be happening or expected. Every first appointment for blood work and visiting the doctor was on a Tuesday, which meant the chem first chemo followed on a Wednesday. The second chemo followed on a Thursday. And then the Friday was okay, but the Saturday and the Sunday were the really rough days. 
So for God to be looking out for the dates of when things happened, so that the two days that I'm at my lowest, I'm not alone, that I have people here because it's a weekend was amazing. It was through the summer, so I was able to enjoy time sitting outside relaxing. Um, the other part of the blessing was that all of my treatments happened in such a way that they minimally affected work schedules. Treatment number two, I was hoping would be better than number one. Treatment number three, I was hoping would be better than number two. Um, it was a little bit better, but by the time treatment four came around, I was really, really fighting to go for it, uh, to go back for the next treatment because I knew what it entailed. So that begin at the end of month three, Aaron was out riding and took a very hard fall and ended up in a merge with a broken face. He had broken across his cheekbones, his, um, his nose, and that was just the beginning of when I started feeling, okay, God, what are you doing? Like, I can't take much more of this. Um, and Steve was really down. I remember being in the pool and my sister-in-law was here and just emotionally just breaking down asking like, I think Steve's bra like, he's not pulling through. He's, he's not going to make it. And I, the doubt started coming and the fear started coming and just, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And is Steve going to pull through and just one of the uh, older ladies in our small group back a couple of years ago, Haji had just said like, this is a verse that you need to tuck away when you're going in. Um, do not be anxious in everything, give thanks. And you know, that's important in everything. Doesn't matter whether you're in the valley or in a high, you need to give everything to God, regardless of the circumstances. It's interesting when you go through these things, you don't expect to see anybody there that you know. And um, we were sitting, having Steve's chemo treatment after the first one. And I looked and I'm like, these people look really familiar to me. And it was bugging me. So of course, when we were finished, I had to get up and go over and I'm like, oh, I know you guys. They were clients of mine from my previous work. And I said, what are you guys doing here? And sure enough, didn't he have lymphoma? And he was going through the same thing that Steve was. Uh, they quite often would text me, how's Steve doing? Is there anything we can pray for you this week? Can we reciprocate? And how's he doing? And what can we do for him? And and just to know that someone else was praying within the community that wasn't connected to you except through work, um, but was going through the exact same thing. Um, knew what our trials were, knew what the, the struggles were that we were going through as well. And was it, it, we were just able to share. God provided us with a community that goes beyond just Mission City, our home church. Um, the community came from my parents' church, my wife's parents' church, um, the church that my sister attends. A friend of ours attends a church in North Carolina, and that church actually put together a prayer quilt for me. This quilt sat at the front of the church for a few weeks, and people that I don't even know and don't know me saw my name and the fact that I was diagnosed with lymphoma in their bulletin. And so they came forward to the front of the church. They were saying prayers for me, for strength, for endurance, for healing. And each person that said a prayer tied a knot in the little threads that are on this quilt. Um, this quilt went with me to almost every single one of my appointments. And I spent countless hours underneath it, uh, relaxing and resting in my chair. Uh, it was just, it was just such a neat physical reminder. Even some people that came to visit me here tied knots in it as well. So God really provided a community around us. You know, we have a small group within our church that we're a part of, and they just rallied around us and were so, such a blessing to us. They provided parking for us, so we didn't have to worry about that cost. A meal train was set up for us, so I didn't have to worry about meals when I came home from chemo with him. It was already there. Um, just having people come and just sit with Steve so that I could go around and get groceries. The sunshine basket that the small group ladies put together of just 
small verses and, and items that reminded me of how God cares for me and God cares about the little things. And it wasn't just Steve he was looking after, but he was looking after me too. We even had one friend who brought us both to tears when he said, we saved some of our son's stem cells from when he was born. And if those will aid in your recovery or your treatment, um, we'll, we'll give them to you. We'll allow you to use them for your treatments. And that was just such a amazing outpouring from, from everybody. Um, it's just, just amazing. It just reminds you that God's church family goes beyond the church that you attend. It's everybody that believes and trusts in him. Aaron took it upon himself that he gathered some friends up that he knew that Steve loved to cycle and uh, raised some money. He said, uh, I'm taking dad's bike to work. Okay, fine, whatever. He's like, I'm gonna get it refixed. He needed some work on it and dad's gonna be riding again. And this was Aaron's way of uh, looking after dad. The boys, they really stepped up. Um, quite often, Steve, when he would get up after his chemo treatments, he would be quite dizzy. And the boys, as soon as they saw Steve, like even wavering just a little bit, both of them were on either side of him. Or, you know, like a couple of times Steve was on the floor and there was Josh picking Steve up and, and helping him get back to the bed or, you know, putting the Christmas lights up so that we had Christmas lights and getting up on the roof and putting them up this year. They've really become men. They're not my little boys anymore. <laughs> Treatment number six was easier to go through because I thought at that time that was the end. Um, and I was looking forward to finishing treatment number six, ringing the bell and walking away from all of this. But God had other plans. Right around the time I should have started feeling better from the last treatment, I started feeling sick again. I started feeling weak. I started getting itchy. I had a rash on my hip. Um, we didn't think too much of it until Halloween night when the rash broke out and it spread all down my leg. So we went to a walk-in clinic and the doctor on call um, looked at it and said, you have shingles. And because of the fact that I just finished six months of chemotherapy, they were quite concerned and they got me on a very strong antiviral medication right away. About uh, four or five days after this had been diagnosed and I was taking this medication, I wasn't getting any better. Um, I was now itchy for approximately half of my body. My entire left side was, was very itchy. A rash from my hip to my knee. And I remember one day I was in the office trying to do some work and I wound up on the floor doubled over in pain. And if someone had come in at that moment and said to me, what can I do to help you? I would have said, hit me in the back of the head as hard as you can and put me out. I didn't want to, I didn't want to end it, I just wanted to be out. The pain was unbearable. My wife then came home and she took me back to, emergency, to the emergency department at Dravinsky. It was determined that yes, indeed it was shingles and it had attacked um, the nerves coming out of the base of my spine. And by this point, it had shut down muscle function in my left leg. It had also shut down muscle function to my bladder, to my bowels. Um, I was basically bedridden at that point. They were so concerned about the shingles spreading that I wound up with private accommodations, um, which was fantastic. I wasn't in a ward, I wasn't in a hallway, I had a room that I was put into. Through all of the treatments um, for chemo and then the follow-up with the shingles treatments, it physically took a toll on me. I had lost a total of 40 pounds. I had lost the ability to use my left leg. I was now reduced to using a walker to get around. I had gone from almost 50 years old, racing through the woods on my bike, chasing my boys, having a great time, to struggling to use a walker to make it to the end of the hallway and back. Before all of this had happened, I remember looking at myself in the mirror and going, you look good for almost 50. Physically fit, healthy, active. I was very prideful in my abilities, 
I was prideful in my appearance and God took that all away. Everything I have, everything I am, I owe to God. God has blessed me with an amazing family, a wonderful career, a beautiful house, friends and family. I never attributed my health, my physical abilities to God. God gave me all that as well. And in his wisdom, he took it away from me for a time. I'm so thankful he's given it back. And I will never, never take it for granted. So, as well as all of the physical things that he's given me, the salvation he's offered me, he's also given me the physical ability to be active and do things. And for that, I am so thankful. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I used to mountain bike at night, and when doing so, you need lights to see where you're going. However, you can't see what's around the next corner. You can't see what's at the top of the hill or the bottom of a hill. You can only see far enough to advance yourself forward. And when you get to that bend or, the, or that hill, your light then light up enough to continue to go further. And so that's how I look at God's word and God's plan for my life. I don't know what's, what he has planned for the future. I only know what is happening now. And maybe he gives me glimpses into a little bit into the future. That's how I view God's word. And that's what that verse is for my life. So I got Steve home, got him nicely settled. And one night Aaron got up and he got out into the kitchen and he was, I could hear him. He got a glass of water. And then all of a sudden I heard a bang on the floor. Josh came upstairs and I looked at him and said, I don't feel good. I need to go sit. And I was just getting to the point where I was about to pass out. And then Josh looked over at Steve and Steve's like, I don't feel good. And he was on the floor and he was like, what is going on? Well, it turned out it was COVID coming into the house and Josh got it as well. Thankfully though, we were able to keep it away from Steve. And the blessing in it is that we got it after Steve got home. It didn't affect him through treatments. We didn't get it through his treatment period, so it didn't put off his treatments either. He, he didn't get it. So in January of 2024, I went back uh, to see my oncologist after having another PET scan to determine how effective the treatments had been. The PET scan results totally surprised my oncologist. Um, he said he looked at the results and he couldn't believe what he was seeing. He was not seeing any lymph nodes that were swollen. He was not seeing any symptoms or signs of lymphoma anymore, um, which is amazing because I was told at the beginning that it would never go away. It would always be there. Um, he's saying it may come back, um, but what he's seeing is full remission. Everything's back to how it should be, looking the way it should. And uh, it's, it's only a miracle I can attribute to God. Now that the treatments are done and the uh, shingles are, for the most part, healed up, the plan is now what they call a maintenance plan. So once every three months, I need to go back and I have a five minute injection. And that will happen for the next two years. And during that time, there'll be periodic blood work. There will be um, probably another PET scan just to monitor kind of see where everything's going. Other than that, my personal plan is to keep building myself physically, to get back to riding, to doing some more activities, starting to build the energy levels back up. The biggest spiritual lesson I learned from all of this um, came to me actually through a friend, and that is, in everything, give thanks. I had always understood it as, in everything, be thankful. Be thankful for everything. Even if something bad happens to you, be thankful for it. No, it's in everything, give thanks. I don't believe that God is asking me to give thanks for everything that happens to me. I believe God is asking me to give thanks in everything that happens. 
God is the provider of everything I have, including my health and my, my well-being. My name is Steve Cole, and this is my story of God at work in my life.